is not that they're stupid. These are not stupid people. They're not low IQ people. They're not dumb people. They're not uh, simple people. They have decided in particular areas of their life to evade, to completely ignore reality, to ignore facts, and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and just be, be mindless. So it's not about this. If they were just stupid, then pff, who cares? Then they're just stupid. It's that they're not stupid that makes it so shocking and so surprising still and will for a long time, I guess, surprise me because I have a benevolent view of people will continue uh, uh, you know, to, to, to shock me and surprise me. And, and some of them are on our chat. So, you know, they're, they're on here regularly or they, or they, many of them have left because they, they were on, you remember they won in January 2021 telling me that Biden was never going to be president. He was never going to be. And I said, you know, if you're right, I will apologize. I will say I was wrong and apologize. But if you're wrong, I want you to come back on the show and on the chat and admit you were wrong. And not a single one of them ever did that. They were all gone. They were all disappeared. Um, and uh, and some of the Russian supporters have disappeared from our channel as well. And my guess is as, as Russia um, uh, as Russia is clearly defeated, many more of them will disappear. Um, and I guess they, they keep chatting among themselves, trying to figure out what went wrong or, or, or why uh, you know there is this alternative parallel universe in which they were right and why we were all wrong. Anyway, it's it's truly it's an interesting phenomena. Lack of thinking lack of uh, acceptance of facts of reality, even at the most basic level, is truly interesting. Uh, but this, you know, you shouldn't take anything I say, um, I say seriously, because ultimately all I am is a vehicle for the Ukrainian government propaganda machine. All I do is recite to you what I hear uh, and what the Ukrainians ask me. I hope they pay me well. I really do hope they pay me well. Um, <laughs> Patriot Pete just posted something really good. So it's it's not a super chat. It should be a super chat. It's not a super chat. It's in the it's in the chat, but it's worthy of a petition because it's actually really good. Uh, he writes: the Russian army losing so badly that Putin is at risk of losing the support of the Republican Party. <laughs> That's really good. I thought it would just be a conventional thing. Oh, Putin's losing the support of the Russian people or losing the support of the Kremlin or something like that. But, but no, he's at risk of losing the support of Tucker Carlson. He might actually lose Tucker Carlson and the rest of the Republican Party. What will he do then? <laughs> All right. Um, that was funny. Uh, who is it? Uh, who said that? Patriot Pete. Cool. <laughs> All right. So as you know, um, uh, you know, I will do my spiel on 9-11 in a few minutes. But as you know, um, uh, you guys get to dictate much of the program and what we talk about on the show. You can do so um, with the uh, Super Chat. Uh, you can ask questions. You can ask, um, you can ask big questions, small questions. You can ask questions on anything. I see a number of questions already on 9-11 that is great or on Russia. That would be great. So, uh, so any of those, any of those kind of questions that relate to the topics we talked about on the show, would be uh, 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 fantastic and appreciated. But you can really ask questions about anything. So feel free to jump in uh, with those. And um, 9/11. So um, 9/11, I think, will go down as one of those uh, uh, real moments in which history shifted, in which uh, it will be one of those moments uh, in the decline of America that is going to be noted and remembered and historians will study and try to understand what and how and, 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 and explain it. It is, of course, we know and we've discussed often that ultimately ideas shape history. And there's no question, we'll talk about this, that ideas shaped America's response to 9-11. But existentially, what happens, things like wars, things like a terrorist attack on the scale of 9-11, things like particular elections or particular responses, they accelerate or slow down particular historical processes. They're not determining of the, the rise or decline, 
but they are accelerants or they slow down the rise, the kind of inevitable rise and decline that is driven by ideas. So while ideas give you the, the, the broad framework of the direction a culture is heading in, the specifics, how it declines, speed of its decline, the way in which, the particular way in which it declines, ultimately determined by the people, the facts, the, the events, if you will, uh, on the ground, on the ground. And certainly this is the case of 9-11. Now, America has been in decline uh, for, for a long time, certainly uh, by certain measures, economic freedom, certainly America's been in decline for about 100 years. Um, uh, that decline uh, was slowed down a little bit, maybe by Ronald Reagan, but then accelerated later on by uh, a compassionate conservative George Bush. But of course, George Bush's whole term was dictated by, was to a large extent determined by 9-11. But the economic, the economic decline of America, uh, economic liberty is really being set in place by the progressives, by progressive ideas, by the ideas of collectivism and altruism and socialism, and, and just a rejection of the ideas of the founding fathers, the idea of, of, of individualism and of, of individual rights. In other fronts, liberty and freedom have increased in the United States over a certain period of time. But generally, the ideas of our intellectuals, the ideas at the forefront of our culture have been, for the most part, in decline, with, I think, a slight uh, reversal uh, during the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, but then a continuation of that decline. And those ideas are basically being shaped, be shaped by the left, by ideas coming out of uh, the left as manifest in the progressive movement started in the uh, mid 19th century and ongoing into the 20th century. Uh, that progressive movement uh, has, be became, has become more radicalized by um, uh, postmodernism that has morphed, ultimately morphed into kind of the, the, the hippies of the new left, the rejection of traditional uh, Marxism and, and uh, basically an embrace of pure subjectivism, pure emotionalism, uh, and which has reverted into what we have today, which is critical race theory and DEI and, and uh, ESG and, all, and, and uh, doomsday climate change and all the rest of it. Those are the ideas at the forefront. And one of the great tragedies, not one of the great, the fundamental tragedy of America is that the people who position themselves, the people who position themselves as the defenders of the ideas of the founding, which means the ideas of individualism, of individual rights, of capitalism, of freedom, of liberty, the people who position themselves as the defenders of that, as the lovers of our history and our founding fathers and the declar in our, in our institutions and in our documents and our constitution, the people who position themselves defending that have no clue what those ideas are based on. The, the great tragedy is that the people who position themselves to defend all that are not men of enlightenment, but are men of regression. They are conservatives. Conservative, conservatives have always opposed the radical nature of the formation of the United States of America. I mean, real conservatives. America was radical. America was a big change. America was a big shift. And it didn't fit. So we're left with religionist conservatives to defend a radical, fundamentally secular, fundamentally individualist revolution. We're, we're left with the William F. Buckley's of the world, and, and he's the best among them, to defend a revolution that was completely foreign to William F. Buckley's mentality. So the right basically left open to the left to have influence over the culture 
and the, uh, the policy, the fundamental policy issues of America. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.